guys, Operator Juski here, and today we're going to look at the highlights of the Arma 3 Apex Tanoa map. Um, this is available via Dev Branch, so if you have the game pre ordered, you can go onto uh, your Steam and enter the Dev Branch, and you're able to actually download the 6 gigabytes needed to run this map, which is really cool. Thank you to Bohemia for letting us look at the map first, get a lot of media about it before we actually uh, let players think, okay, should I buy Apex or should I not buy Apex? This gives, you know, a lot of time for bug fixing to happen as well as a lot of advertisement to happen to see if people really want the DLC or not so it's really cool and we're gonna be talking about the map today some highlights about it and also uh, some new VTOL aircraft uh, new vehicles and new weapons and new gear that are going to be in the game I have some screenshots of those for you guys so the mountain is definitely the one iconic piece of Tanoa that everybody saw that everybody was freaking out about this volcano is a sleeping volcano so it's not gonna have any lava in it but it's definitely cool to see just such a big crazy thing happening um, in the center of the map like a volcano it's a really big in your face type of thing uh, that we really haven't had on any Altus or Stratus maps. You don't really see anything really out there. But now that we have a volcano, that is a really cool aspect of the map. If you look at this guy down here, I'm placing him just so you can see the scale of the volcano. We're going to go right beside him. And you can just see how big the volcano really is on the inside. It is a very large area. You could actually have probably a few game modes just within the volcano itself. Um, very cool stuff here. It's kind of interesting because you do see in Tanoa a kind of mirrored effect between fishing and farming and then you also see the more industrial grade things like this gigantic mineral ore mine. Uh, you can definitely see how you know big companies have taken over the landscape and are really hunting for ores within the Tanoa's rich lands and such. It's pretty cool to see big dynamic places like this that are a lot different from the normal terrain uh, of dense jungle and grasslands and such. I think it's just kind of interesting that even though it's, you know, 2035, there are still places that look totally modern and like they're still right now. It's just because some parts of this island are still back like 10 or 20 years, while other parts of the island that are very industrial and very jam-packed with lots of cities and stuff are very futuristic. You see a lot more uh, cleaner buildings. You see a lot more advancements in, you know, technologies just by looking at the buildings and vehicles themselves. But then you get to these old farmlands that look pretty modern day, and it looks like just normal islands that you would see in modern modern day today. So outside of this jungly forest is the city of Georgetown. This is a big, big town, almost bigger than Kavala in my opinion. Um, this also would be probably the hotspot for future King of the Hill missions, uh, any big uh, you know, operations where you need to go take over an urban environment. This is where it's probably going to be. The frame rate drops to 23 in this area on my ultra settings on my i7 4770K and a GTX 970, so I'm kind of worried about this, um, but I am running a pretty high uh, settings at the moment. If I ran down a little bit, I probably could save a lot of frames, especially if I put object detail on low or something and did a few things like that. These big skyscrapers, they are not interable, but that's, I think, a good thing in my opinion, because if they were interable, it would take down a lot more frames than it already does, and it really wouldn't be really necessary in my opinion. This is a temple. Yeah, an actual temple in Arma 3 to Noah. It is insane. So first off, we have this little area right here. This is the front gate. It does kind of warn you with this really scary looking thing uh, that has an eye inside of its mouth as well as a lot of little sharp teeth there. Uh, pretty much telling you not to go inside. You go inside and there's another thing telling you not to go any farther. And another thing that I think is telling you, hey, buy a donut because he's holding some circular object. Um, so you go farther. There's another guy that wants to, you know, really, really want to sell you donuts and has some weird coat on as well but you get past these main walls and here is where the main temple is it is ginormous i mean you just check this thing out it looks like something from uh from the jungle book really it looks like uh the monkey's castle i don't really know what the monkey's called but that's that's what it reminds me of at least so you go inside of here and inside of here you look at the roof and the roof is just this broken down really viney and overgrown area it's just awesome to look at nothing like this has really been in armor before you know, that feeling of just things being overgrown and the forest and, and nature taking its way back uh, has never really been shown in Arma 3 before or any Arma game, really. And this place, definitely with the design, just look at the shadow detail. Look at the detail of all the different bricks and the, the dynamicness of all these bricks that are kind of falling down and this, this ceiling is caving in and stuff. 
and how the ceiling is just caving in and stuff and you can actually see the ceiling that part the part of it that caved in down here on the ground I thought that was a really cool part of this temple room this main room right now um, there's also a few other temples around this area I think there's one here and then there's one up here in this little spot so these are really cool temples um, I've actually seen part of the armor 3 apex videos and it looks like these temples are gonna be part of the co-op campaign so that's gonna be really fun to play in um, but as you can see that entire temple area is just within this little circle here and you cannot really see it from far off you don't really notice it and there's nothing that actually goes up to it which is kind of interesting I, I would expect a lot of tourism but all the tourism that goes up to this place is this single dirt path that kind of goes up you do see a lot of these dirt paths in Tanoa by the way these are very very common they go and they kind of wind through the forest usually um, these kind of will bring you to high value places like the uh, the place we just went to itself um, so like this path will probably bring us up to the temple itself let's let's see where it brings us oh it's actually bringing us in like a, a little cliff area yeah look at this look how dynamic Tonoa is that's the one word I want to say for Tonoa because it's so different there's so many different like like locations like I've never actually seen anything like this location yet and yet we're exploring this totally new right now and this probably goes up to the temple itself or goes above it looks like this is gonna go above it actually this is a really cool pathway. I just kind of go, oh my god, what? <laughs> See? There's just, a, there's just a small village up on the top of this mountain. How insane is that? Like, just, we just went up a random dirt path and it brings us to a village on top of that mountain. That just shows you just how crazy Tanoa is. So now that we're done looking at the Tanoa map itself, we're going to look at a few things that have come out via a Arma 3 update video. This is a dev blog video that they showed on their official Arma 3 YouTube video. So if you want to go watch that instead, this is, this is going to be a lesser detailed, a quicker version of that video. Um, this is going to be the highlights that I think are most important of that video. But that video was definitely high quality. Go check it out on the Arma 3 YouTube channel. So first off, we got a few shots of the CTRG faction with their new enhanced helmets, as well as a few shots of the new H. K416. The 416 can now be combined with a drum magazine, which is really crazy, and the drum magazine can be on a normal 416, which can have a gigantic suppressor, a bipod, and a scope, as you can see in this picture. Um, next up, we have a CSAT soldier with the new CSAT camouflage. I also have another picture that I'll put up, but in this picture specifically, specifically, uh, you can see a new type of night vision goggle that is on his head. It's very advanced, more like a, a googly-eyed type of uh, mosquito vision type of night vision goggle. I don't really know what these are gonna work as something some people were saying you know they might be thermal vision because both sides both CSAT and NATO are developing thermal uh thermal hiding suits, I guess that's the best way to say it, and that they can conceal a person's body heat if you're wearing the helmet and the suit itself. But, and so some people were saying, and I was actually hypothesizing, these might be thermal goggles, but then the files themselves, it says NVGs, so I'm not really sure about that. I'm probably just going to be safe and say it's probably just NVGs that are a little bit more upgraded than the standard types we saw in Altus and Stratus, but that is my guess. Um, we still have a chance of it being thermal goggles. We also have the new vehicles, uh, the new VTOLs in particular. There's a VTOL for NATO and a VTOL for CSAT. I like the VTOL of the NATO side in particular because the side of it has three gigantic cannons like a C-130 does, uh, which are going to be a really, really effective for ground pounding types of work when you're, when you're really needing a support from the sky, going onto the ground, killing some tanks, some infantry and stuff. That is going to be a really cool vehicle to use, especially when it's in an NV-22 kind of Osprey form. The NATO uh, VTOL can carry more people, but it is a little bit slower and less aggressive, less agile but the CSAT variant is a lot more agile as you can see in the picture of the CSAT variant I'm clicking over to it uh, it's a lot more aggressive of a look it has a lot faster looking jets on the sides and stuff looks a lot more advanced than the NATO variant but it's still a really cool design we also have two new UAVs. Uh, the CSAT UAV is a smaller and lighter weight version of the current CSAT, I think, what are the UAVs called? I don't know, the Kabil, Kabil? I don't know. Um, and then we also have a new type of UAV that is actually a helicopter for NATO side. It's really interesting. It has lots of Hellfire and Hydropod missiles on the sides. Very cool. Um, that's going to be an interesting thing to fly in the new Tanoa map. As well as here, we have a new set of camos for the CSAT faction, which is definitely necessary over the older camos that never really worked that well in Altus or Stratus, in my opinion. Um, the new camos are green, brown, and black, and I think that's a really cool hex camo. I think it's a cool color scheme, especially seeing it on the Ifrit back there and also the IFV that's behind that Ifrit is definitely really cool. We also have a shot of the new bandits in this DLC. We see people that are half 
in civilian clothing and half in kind of camouflage clothing. You see them wearing things that, you know, you would wear on your daily day basis, but then you also see them having some military gear on, like backpacks, some vests, some range master belts or something. You see a lot of that happening, as well as you see this guy with an M249, and you see the guys behind him with AK-47, or that's an AK-74 SEU in the back. Um, so definitely cool stuff to see. As well as here is the full picture of all weapons available in the game uh, in Apex DLC. There, from the left to right, you see a bullpup type of designated marksman rifle or sniper rifle. I don't exactly know what that gun is, but I do know pretty much every other gun past that. There's an HK-417, very long designated marksman variant. There's the M230 variant of the HK416. There's the other HK416, the standard version. And actually, we have an MP5K coming in. I don't really know what the PDW was until now, but it's an MP5K. That's pretty interesting. Don't really know who that's going to be used by, but probably the CTRG Special Forces. There is a Makarov PM. Uh, there is the Car 95 and the Car 95 with a grenade launcher. There's the RPG-7, the AK-47, the AK-74. U or SU, I don't really know which one that's called. Um, there's the two AK-12s, but then we do see that double-barreled gun that I was talking about earlier, which is the half 50 cal, half 6.5 millimeter rifle. The 50 cal barrel is on the bottom, the 6.5 is on the top. That is a... <laughs> Oh my gosh, that is a very interesting weapon to be in armor game, and I'm really excited to use that because you could just be a normal infantry soldier, and you could also take out a car if you wanted to. Um, so that's really interesting. Definitely a cool weapon set to be in the new game. So guys, that is all the new info we really have about the Arma 3 Apex at the moment. I'll have more updates coming soon as well. Uh, there's a lot more hypothesis and all that stuff coming out, but... If you really want to see a really detailed version of this video, this is a very quick kind of recap of everything that's been going on. Go check out the Arma 3 official video about this. Link will be in the description, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Contact, man! What are you? Oh my god! 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 Oh my god!